Today we're talking about the stock market, gambling for rich people. The roulette marble has consistently landed on black for about a decade, but this week it landed on red, causing investment banks to lose so much money that I thought we were halfway through a Sanders presidency there for a second. My goal today is to explain what probably triggered this market sell-off and then talk about how this influences the broader economy. So first, what triggered this sell-off? Well, two things really. The coronavirus and investors seeing everybody selling off their stocks because of the coronavirus. If you're on a cruise and everyone's getting into the lifeboats, your first thought probably isn't, gee, I bet the line for the buffet is really short right now. Investors are selling stocks first and asking questions later. We're seeing signs of pure liquidation. Get me out at any cost seems to be the prevailing mood. Fortunately for you guys though, I'm going to start with the questions. First, how was this stock collapse triggered? Now There are two main ways that get cited in a lot of panicked articles. One is speculative and the other is currently happening. Let's start with the one that's currently happening. This is the supply chain, so goods that are manufactured in China would normally be crossing the, the ocean and arriving in Europe and in the United States a few weeks later. Now, we know that a lot of those sailings haven't happened because of restrictions in the ports, because there aren't enough goods to fill the ships, sailings have been cancelled. I'm not sure if you've heard, but a lot of our stuff is made in China, and huge factory delays and larger number of quarantined workers are affecting all of it. We'll just put it this way. I wouldn't get in line for the new iPhone anytime soon. Hanging an out of stock sign instead of selling an item is not good for companies, and short term bottom lines are being affected. Similarly, companies with retail stores in China are experiencing a pretty large drop in demand. Starbucks just closed 2,000 stores in China. <gasps> oh no, where are people going to go to the bathroom now? So a lack of supply outside of China and a lack of demand inside China is the underlying problem that triggered the sell-off, right? Well, that's the easy answer, but I'm not so sure it's the right one. If you look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average over the last month, you'd see that the collapse started on February 21st, or this Monday. Now I can tell you that all these supply line problems started long before the 21st, and there were plenty of articles about that issue dating back before this Monday. Unless you believe that a Wall Street banker sprinted into his boss's office this Monday and exclaimed, have you heard about this new coronavirus? No one's talking about it yet, but we should really be the first ones to factor this into our future investing. Something else is going on here. So what is going on? We've been talking about coronavirus for weeks, but now the panic has reached our shores. Wall Street continues to sell on those coronavirus fears. The Dow falling close to 900 points today after a thousand point drop during yesterday's trading. That is the worst two day stretch for the Dow since February of 2018. There are a few reasons that probably working in tandem would magnify the impact to a 2008 scale. First, the straw that broke the camel's back. What happened on Monday morning to suddenly lead investors to freak the heck out? Well, Sunday night we saw headlines about a surge of infections in Italy going from 3 people to 132, as well as infections surging in South Korea and Iran. My guess is the trigger for this stock market collapse was overnight algorithms pricing that new information into their stock value evaluations and all clicking the sell button simultaneously. So that doesn't inspire a ton of optimism in the future, but if it's any consolation, we are not dealing with predictions from the World Health Organization members here, but rather some guy named Jad who's a day trader. He does seem reliable though. Still, this initial reaction does seem to imply that an army of Chad the day traders think that companies' profits are going to suffer as a result of this new viral information. If you disagree with them, well, it's a real buyer's market for stocks right now. Still, this on its own is not a satisfying enough answer for me, because it's not like this Monday we just realized for the first time that, whoa, this incredibly infectious disease rampaging China could be a pandemic. It was gradually being priced into the stock's value as risk increased. 
So did this new infection information lead to an immediate reevaluation of every publicly traded company as 10% less valuable than they were yesterday? My guess is no. Asset prices diverged significantly from growth in the past year, in part because of central bank policy, but also because passive investment's main signal is price action. While coronavirus evaluations re-evaluations were the straw that broke the camel's back, there was plenty of straws building up to this point. Let me do a callback to earlier in this video. The stock market is a roulette wheel that kept coming up black, or growth. So people kept putting more and more money on black, to the point where, by all accounts, we were pretty grossly overvaluing companies. Come on, it hasn't come up red since 2008. Look at all this money. This coupled with a relatively low federal funds rate that encouraged investing over saving left people with a ton of cash to spend in a legal casino that was paying dividends. Literally. My guess is a lot more of this collapse is an overcorrection in the valuation of companies than the price again of the coronavirus risk. Although I do suspect that high level trading firms pricing in that risk triggered the collapse. Now to the final point. Why do I say overcorrection rather than just correction? Well, simply put, let me ask you this, viewer. Right now, do you want to buy stocks, sell stocks, or hold on to your current holdings? You probably want to sell, right? Makes sense. I agree. My follow-up question, though, is why? Do you think that the value of the companies is still overvalued in the current stock prices? Or is it because all of a sudden the roulette wheel is constantly coming up red? I'm not sure what your thoughts are, but I think it can successfully predict the sentiment of at least a narrow majority of Chad the day traders who are in full panic mode right now. So what does any of this mean for the broader economy? First, the good news. That's right, even this glass is half full. The panicked masses are taking their money out of stocks and dumping them into the much safer treasury bonds. This basically means that if the government wants to take on additional debt, well now's the time to do it. Because investors are literally competing with one another to lend the government money. Now I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on this because I realize that bond markets are so nerdy that stock markets beat them up and shove them into gym lockers, but America can borrow money right now at incredibly low interest rates. Now to the downside of the stock market collapse. If you're looking to cash out soon to retire or pay for education, man, this really stinks. I'm sorry. If you're a company planning on raising money through going public or selling additional stocks, might want to hold off on that for a bit. Overall though, the stock market is not the economy, so it's not the large impact some people are presenting it as. The one definitive thing I can say is, over the past five days, a metric ton of people came to believe that they were holding assets that were overvalued and decided to sell them. Until next time, buy low and sell high. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, are you guys jealous about how I decided to spend my Friday night? First I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing group of exceptional individuals by clicking on the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.